All right, it's 1 p.m. here on the East Coast, 10 a.m. out west. I'm John Bachman. Hi, everybody. I'm Bianca De La Garza. Thanks so much for staying with us today. We continue to follow the breaking news at this hour. The FBI has just concluded a search of President Biden's home in Rehoboth Beach, Delaware, and we're being told that no documents with classified mockings were found. The president's personal attorney, Bob Bauer, saying in a statement that this was a planned search that was conducted from 8.30 this morning until noon Eastern time. Not too much of a surprise that a search was happening, but we did not know when. Um, obviously, the president did, as it was planned, according to his lawyer. Let's get you out to the White House with more on the breaking details. Chief White House correspondent James Rosen joins us. Uh, James, good to see you. So I guess um, they knew uh, it was planned, but not planned where, you know, the media was told in advance that this would be happening. That's correct, Bianca and John. This was described by Bob Bauer, the personal attorney for President Biden, as a, quote, planned search. Uh, he stated that under the standard procedures of the Department of Justice, in the interests of what he called operational security and integrity, uh, there was no advance public notice for the search, and the president and his attorneys uh, complied uh, with that request. Um, now, this is not the first surprise, we should point out. Uh, because it was only this past week through published reporting that we learned of a third FBI search in this case. Uh, back on the 9th of November, apparently, the FBI searched the Penn Biden Center, which was sort of ground zero for this burgeoning scandal, uh, because it was there on the 2nd of November of last year, according to the president's personal attorneys, uh, that the first discovery of classified materials came. And so that FBI search we just learned about uh, that took place around on or around November 9th. Uh, that's a big surprise to us. And now this search of the Rehoboth home. We have been asking the White House for weeks uh, whether the Rehoboth Beach home would be subject to a search, as the Wilmington home was uh, in January of this year, uh, where FBI agents spent 13 hours on the 20th of January coming up with six pages of classified materials. And we kept getting answers uh, from the White House uh, that uh, it wouldn't be appropriate to share any information. What's baffling about this news today uh, is really on the perspective of the FBI why the Bureau and its agents uh, now investigating a case that is being presided over by a special counsel would wait so long between conducting searches of the president's homes. Uh, the Wilmington search, the 13-hour search that turned up classified material, that was back on January 20. Uh, that is over 10 days ago why they would wait uh, to search the Rehoboth home, um, I think will be subject to some scrutiny as we learn more details about this investigation, Bianca and John. You know, James, it's interesting considering, you know, you read all the reports on this, everyone seems to be so careful about mentioning this was a planned search, like there was no real reason for it or whatever, I don't understand. But, you know, we have the uh, White House press briefing coming up later this afternoon. Can you give us a sense of the level of frustration from the press corps? They keep getting stonewalled. We had a, a soundbite from Kate Benningfield earlier saying they, they claim they're being transparent. But again, we're having a search of the president's beach house. The drip, drip, drip continues. And I was just wondering from you, insider's perspective on the press corps, is that frustration still kind of, you know, palpable? Well, first, to answer your first statement and question as to uh, why the emphasis in the statement from the president's personal attorney on a planned search, uh, the key objective there from the perspective of the president and his advisors is to try to draw a sharp contrast with the Trump documents case where uh, the search of Mar-a-Lago back on the 8th of August was by no means planned in the sense that uh, it was a surprise raid, an execution of a search warrant. Uh, by the FBI in that case. And so they're saying this is a planned search. There was no search warrant necessary. There were no judges. There were no, uh, you know, it wasn't conducted in the same way as, as what happened at Mar-a-Lago. That's the intent behind that language, planned search. As to the frustration of the press corps, and does it remain palpable, the answer is yes. Um, and when we watch today's briefing uh, scheduled for 2 p.m. Eastern time, we will see it on display once again as the reporters knowing full well that uh, in 99.9% .9 of the cases, Karine Jean-Pierre is simply going to refer them to the White House Counsel's Office or to the Department of Justice, they nonetheless go about plying her with questions about these, this, this, this case. Um, and the reason they do that uh, is multifaceted. One, just to get it on the record. Yeah. Two, the, the more cynical among us might suggest that people are looking for camera time. Uh, but three, uh, perhaps, you know, the, the, the hope remains that those who uh, supervise Karine Jean-Pierre's work in the White House, such as Kate Bedingfield, might actually uh, make the, the decision prudent in most eyes to give her some more 
things to say about the case. You know, as someone who doesn't live in Washington, you know, you look at the coverage as an outsider. You, sometimes you wonder who the press corps' constituency is. It is it themselves. But this case, when you when you see their frustration, when you hear them asking the questions, it seems to match what a lot of America wants to know right now, and that's what's going on. You know, James, you guys have had some access to the White House Counsel's Office. The question I have is why not bring that person to the press briefing room since they can answer these questions. Most of the questions we know are going to be about this. It seems like if the White House were, were really interested mm -hmm. in providing some transparency, they would just bring the spokesperson from the White House Counsel's Office to answer those questions. It's not clear we'd get different answers, frankly. Uh, maybe they wouldn't refer us to the counsel's office because that individual would come from the counsel's office, but you'd get a lot of answers to the effect that it wouldn't be prudent to comment amidst a pending investigation and so forth. Uh, the White House official who has most frequently broken this rule uh, and commented directly on pending uh, Department of Justice investigations is the president who, himself, mm -hmm. who in August and then again in September in the 60 Minutes interview, uh, mocked his predecessor's disposition with the Trump documents case saying, come on, uh, when asked about the claims of declassification and uh, calling the former president totally irresponsible in the 60 Minutes interview. Uh, so when it suits him, President Biden has been uh, more than uh, ready to comment on pending DOJ investigations. There is a lot of published reporting to the effect now that DOJ has made clear to the White House that uh, there is really nothing prohibiting senior White House officials from discussing the underlying facts That's of this case. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but nonetheless, when you have a special counsel involved, the entire playing field shifts a few degrees, and so the, the extraordinary caution that we're seeing from White House officials at this point, uh, in political terms, in survival terms, might be justified. Yeah, and it would if, if the White House counsel spokesperson were there, they couldn't send you guys on that runaround and play this game. Oh, well, I can't do this here. It's got to be done over there. When they did uh, talk, they did it via a phone call, which James yeah. was on, and, and they I think they're pretty clear. James said we won't be on camera. Maybe it's they don't want to have the facial expressions. They don't want the video, which would live on on the internet as we know for a long time. Yes, inquiring minds mm -hmm. want to know, as they used to say. James Rosen, great to see you, thank you. Thanks, James. All right, let's get more on how this is all playing out and welcome in former National Press Secretary for the Trump campaign and former Principal Deputy Press Secretary at the White House, Hogan Gidley. Great to see you, Hogan. Hi, Hogan. Great to see you all, thanks for the time. You know, obviously th these situations are not the same with the way president trump was handled and the way joe biden was handled but i'm thinking back on so many other scandals uh when the white house press corps was on fire about fast food being served to the clemson tigers you know i could not believe i was looking back at that actually because i was looking at the russian collusion narrative and there was a there was a sound by the president trump he's walking into the white house you might remember this it was snowy outside and he, t and he took the time in the middle of the peak of the Russian collusion hysteria to, to say, look, I just wanted to give these guys some fast food or whatever. You, you, I think sometimes with President Trump, maybe you could agree, there was too much transparency. It's the complete opposite here with Joe Biden. Well, um, the press corps wasn't really complaining about the transparency Donald Trump provided them when he would do a two and a half hour cabinet meeting and then he would, uh, you know, we'd have a press conference and then Donald Trump would have another hour and a half long press engagement in the East Room at the at the West Wing, and then he'd be out before the helicopter for another hour-long interview, and then he'd land somewhere and do a two-and-a-half-hour rally. So they got all the transparency and the conversation they wanted. And, and to the Clemson Tiger point, I remember in that press conference, he pointed out that he had enough hamburgers to stack a mile high. As I recall, they fact-checked that yeah. as being not true <laughs> because technically they weren't a mile high. Even if you had them in boxes, it wouldn't be a mile high. This is the kind of dealings we have with the press corps um, that, that was so frustrating. But look, I think James Rosen hit on something in the segment before. Incredible reporter, but for him and a couple of others in that room, that entire White House press briefing room is basically packed with deputy press secretaries for Karine Jean-Pierre parroting yeah. her nonsense from behind that podium. But he said that the Biden team was focused on the fact that this raid, or excuse me, this review of these documents, this searching of his house was planned as if that's a good thing and it differentiated Donald Trump and Joe Biden. But it, it does, but not in the way they think it does. It differentiates the fact that dual system of justice, the lights on a helicopter overhead of Mar-a-Lago, yep. the blue and red flashing lights, the kicking out of every one of Mar-a-Lago, no attorneys present. They got to go in there and raid the thing. Where are the boxes yeah, the and, the, and the folders? Is the problem. Spread out across the carpet with the cool picture yes. and the top secret cover sheets. Yes. Where, where is that stuff? I'd like to see it. Well, clearly, right. and, you know, it's totally different. And the conjecture different. that Donald Trump was using those documents to sell them to a foreign power. 
I mean, they went down every rabbit hole possible. So these two instances aren't even close to being the same uh, for, for many reasons, but not the least of which is that Donald Trump was the president of the United States. He's the only one in all these scenarios that had the authority to, cl- uh, to have these documents, the ability to declassify them. Joe Biden did not, while he was vice president, did not while he was senator. And that's really one of the major issues, not to mention neither did Hillary Clinton. It's the dual system of justice that I think people are really most frustrated by. Right, and at least, you know, the silver lining is this, is we see it. And it's very clear when you see Trump's handle, the way they handle Trump and the way they handle Biden. That said, we are in this position now where you have reporters like James Rosen who will walk into that briefing within an hour and ask questions, and we will not get the answers. And part of that, I want you to speak to this, is that the Biden's attorneys have done so well to use this now and say he's got plausible deniability. Right. He said, oh, I haven't asked the lawyers about any of this. So that's, you know, one thing. It's client privilege, uh, attorney client privilege. And now uh, the GOP House controlled. They're being blocked, Hogan, to get answers because there's a special counsel. They can't get they can't get penetrate this when there could be so much when it comes to the Penn Biden Center and these anonymous donors from China. There are much more serious issues here when it comes to what possibly uh, a senator had, not a sitting president, as you said. Well, it was a gift to the White House when the special counsel was opened. And you would say, why? They're investigating Joe Biden. But right. it allows uh, the press team to say, no, no, we can't comment on any ongoing investigations. And of course, what John pointed out is absolutely right. They can't, nor really should they. It allows the press people like myself to kind of push it off to somebody else. The problem is the president of the United States can and often does. And in Joe Biden's instance, He will continue when it's about him to say, wait a minute, I can't comment on this. It's ongoing. But if it's about someone else that actually helps his political narrative to some degree or helps his radical ideology, he's happy to comment on those instances, whether it be about some type of shooting in some location or whether it be about um, um, documents with Donald Trump. That's, again, kind of the hypocrisy of that little piece of it is that he keeps his mouth shut when it has to do with him. He doesn't want to hurt you know, his potential for a a court case. But when it's someone else, he doesn't stick by that uh, same standard. Instead, he's willing to go on the record and comment. Also, um, speaking of President Biden commenting, he's the only guy who can make uh, the the debt ceiling sound really creepy and gross. Show me yours and I'll show you mine. I'm talking about the budget. I mean, really? Spare us. Mm. Spare us. President Biden. Look, there there is no lack. That's supposed to be a... I didn't mean to open that can of worms. I got, we got, we got, got got Go ahead. There's no lack of creepiness with this president, whether yeah. from the sniffing or the whispering. The whole thing's really weird. Yes. Hogan Gidley, great to see you. Thank you, bud.